Welcome to another video on game development with Asha Kangsa Foundation. In today's video, we'll uh, work on the tic-tac-toe main logic as to when the winner, uh, when the play, when one of the player wins the game, and uh, when the whole bigger game would also be completed. Finally, we will also work on some interesting UI elements and. Uh, basically replace the smaller games that have been completed by the uh, player's symbol who's, uh, who won that smaller game. So let's get started. Now let's start with making the logic for the bigger tic-tac-toe. It's going to be very similar to the one uh, that we have just coded for the smaller one. So that's going to be the tic-tac-toe main controller. We'll create an array for the um, our states for the bigger tic tac toe. So that's going to be our matrix three cross three again. Sorry, new int three cross three and for i equals 0, i less than 3 matrix i comma j should be 0 initial state is 0 and we are going to define so in the um, We're going to define the function small completed and that is going to check for whether the larger game has been completed. The body for this function is going to be exactly the same as the, uh, la the small completed one so we just need to che check the state. So here we're going to have some problems with the variables. Here state denotes the player whose chance it is. So we're going to name the older state to be player. So that to, so just to avoid the confusion. So we'll have to rename it at a lot of places, but to maintain a good code quality, I think this is the best option. State denotes what is the current basically who has been who has been winning that cell so for uh, a cell level state would denote who just clicked on that cell at the um, smaller tic-tac-toe level it denotes who has won that whole tic-tac-toe and for the larger tic-tac-toe state denotes who has won the larger tic-tac-toe so we want to check if the matrix is equal to the player We can do it, but this refactor is a little important to maintain some uh, variable consistency. So I'm not sure how this is done in V. Yeah, okay. So Control D allows me to select all cells together. Again, here itself. So this is right. Everything got fixed here. In the main controller as well, in the cell controller, let's search for game.state. So there's only one. We'll rename it to player. Um, something happened again. Let's 
so that tab got closed cell controller but everything seems fine okay so let's get back to where we were so we are going to update the state with that so here state is going to denote that and we need a public int player which is going to be one in the beginning of the game okay so this is the wrong file tap to main controller uh, we want a state as well Now to call, we'll call this check completed once a cell is clicked. So oh, sorry, once the small completed is called. So once a small tic tac toe is completed, we're going to check the larger tic tac toe if that is completed now. Public void. Sorry, boolean. Now if that is completed, I'm just going to print. If that is completed, print player plus one. Now let's try this out. So we want to complete, uh, okay, so messed up the chances, whose chance it is, that is being done in uh, cell controller, current player is game.player, that should work, and where are we updating game.player, that is happening in the main controller, here, player, so once, we need to update the player as well. Okay, so the first one was one. The second one was one by circle. Now here, again, one by the, now this one, one by the second player, and here we are, now this one was one by the first player, but we didn't get an indication of whether player won has won the complete game. So that's because we didn't call small completed yet. In this function, we also want to call game dot small completed. Let's do that again. Okay, we already got player to one, which is weird, but let's check.
so it's even more weird because we aren't updating our matrices they're always zero so how can we ever have um any player one okay again we want sorry yeah that is correct Let's check if we are updating the state anywhere. Uh, I mean, except for these places where it's fine. Anywhere here, game dot state. Nowhere. Game dot state. Nowhere. Hmm. Oh, we okay. So every time we trigger this, we get a player one one. So every, even in the first try, we did get it. So that means this is coming out to be um, true every time. So the state is never zero. Did we initialize? We did initialize the state to zero. Let's track it while playing. So when we restart the game we have the state to be one um, that shouldn't be right because we are initially initializing the state to be zero let's add it to start once Okay, that is better. Yeah, this one was won by cross. Then we have, oops, so yeah. This one was won by the circle. Then player one wins again. Then this one was won by player 2 and finally we have player 1 winning all 3 and we see that nothing got updated this is because just as we discussed we aren't updating uh, on small completed we aren't updating this matrix for that we need the name of the component that was updated so again we're going to have a string name here then we're going to get the integer of the index and that is going to be name dot substring so our string is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so we want the 11th character and one length and we're going to convert it to an integer using int dot parse now we need to update the matrix index so we already know that the row number is index index by three and the column number is index remainder three so matrix i comma j is going to be player whoever is currently playing So there's just one small problem here. We need to check if the player marked here is uh, like it's before cell clicked is called because otherwise. So here when we're calling, yeah, so we're calling cell click later. And once cell clicked is called, uh, we update the player. So let's rename this function to something more explainable. 
so change player got it this makes sense now let's try it out if it's okay um, where we calling it small completed we need to pass game object dot name the name of the current game object so i really hope it works this time because i think everything is work like it's correct oh great so we did get player 1 1 here and now we since we haven't disabled anything we can actually uh, play the next move and get player 2 1 as well but that is something we need to disable now in order to disable clicks after a player has won the game we are going to go back to the cell controller and here we were checking that if state is not zero return so we will also check that if the parent state is not zero we're going to return or if the whole game state is not zero then also we don't need, need to click this cell so these are the three conditions here in this here in the small tic-tac-toe controller we were checking for this condition but now this is not required clicks will happen only if uh, we'll check for a click only if um, the states are non-zero so we don't even need a return value anymore and we can remove this if yeah all we need to do is mark this as clicked so that uh, the logic to basically update the parents uh, matrix and in case the parent matrix gets failed to update the uh, whole games matrix that that should get executed so that's the main part and we can even shift this uh, below up once we update the current cell because now we don't care about like we there's no return here so we don't even need to store it so all we need to do is check for game.player and that simplifies the code much more than earlier so let's try this out okay so we do have one error which is a game object does not contain okay so here in the player we instead of storing um, in the cell instead of storing the parents game object we're going to um, store the parents um, script as well tic tac token uh, small controller parent controller We can call this one to be the grandparent controller. So yeah, that's what you're going to use. So at the start, I'm going to assign the parent controller to be parent dot get component tic tac toe controller small and that's all here also we don't need to fetch the component again
and this should do let's play once more first box one by player one second one okay what did i just do here so player one has won now we are not able to click on any other cell which is perfect now we're going to learn something new in this video so here uh, what we want to do is when one player wins a particular cell so for example the player one has won this cell we want to replace this whole big cell with a big cross so that it seems like one component of the big tic-tac-toe has been replaced by a cross so to do that we first need to delete all the individual cells that there are in this tic-tac-toe uh, in the small tic-tac-toe and for that we are going to iterate over all its children so how do we uh, fetch a children so we we have uh, nine children we know that and to fetch a child i need to um, call so I need to destroy the child and the child is going to be game object dot transform dot get child. So this gives me, so the transform contains information about what all children are under a game object and that transform, uh, transform dot get child will give you the transform of that of the child. So here if I specify uh, I, so I I think we've already used, uh, we'll use child. So we got the, uh, the child and then we need to destroy its game object. So let's try this out. Let's hope it works. So here we are, we play once, um, okay, so all of them were destroyed and now we want to replace this tic-tac-toe widget, uh, tic-tac-toe sprite with a cross sprite and that's, that we will do by simply, um, calling game object dot get component sprite renderer. and then dot sprite is equal to so um, here in the cell we saw how we um, need to assign the sprite by first uh, getting the sprites value using a public method so here also we we'll do that we will do the same so in the cell controller like we had these player one player two sprites we will create the same here And we'll assign that, so we'll go back to the prefab. I think we do have some error, let's look at it later. Uh, sorry, in the prefab, we want to assign the cross sprite. So, okay, so it will not appear until we fix the error. So we want to convert away. Oh yeah. So we were at this position. Let's comment this line. Or we can simply assign it to be. Uh, so if game.player is, is 1, we're going to assign. Uh, 
there one here else we are going to assign player 2 and let's go back okay now here we have a player 1 player 2 option so this should do let's try and replace the tic tac toe 2 symbol by a cross and see if this it scales well so it doesn't uh, and that means we need to uh, fit this fit the size of the scale according to this so um, we're going to open the cross okay so we're going to open the cross in the inspector and pixels per unit need to be changed to 100 and now if we go back this looks like a big cross so now this this change will lead to um, another problem that it will be big in the smaller cells as well the cross and circle so for those we need to scale down the symbols here to be smaller so if we assign the cross sprite here it's pretty big also let me just so we were editing the prefab here and we need to get back the here right so here this this one's still big right the squares so we need to scale down the squares back to a like a to a smaller size So if I do, if I fit it to a 0.3, it, uh, it settles perfectly, but the box collider would also decrease in size, which means that, um, so if I zoom in and we click on the box collider, hover on, so the size of the box collider has become very small and we'll increase the size back to the original one. Or we can in fact uh, scale the collider a little more. 5 should be better. In fact even, yeah, I think I'll make it 6. So yeah, that, that change has been made to the, uh, instead of making the change to the prefab, I made the change here. So let's undo this uh, change. And let me open the prefab and make those changes here as well. So we have the square prefab open and we want to make the change for x to be uh, 0.3. So here is the, okay. So we selected the prefab and it has been scaled to 0.3 we want the square to be 6 like we saw earlier and now if we put a cross here the sprite it fits perfectly so now if we go back to the main game and try it out once okay so the size is perfect and now it got changed to a big cross which is uh, looking amazing while this one changed to a circle so this component of our game is complete and once uh, so for example if we make the cross one win the game by completing the whole Oops.
ओके सो दिस होल कॉम्पोनेंट वॉज वन बाय एक्स एंड नाउ वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग सो वी गॉट एन इंडेक्स आउट ऑफ बाउंड्स एरर सो लेट्स ओपन द स्क्रिप्ट वी वर एक्सपेक्टिंग प्लेयर वन वन द गेम बट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इंडेक्स आउट ऑफ बाउंड आई एम सपोजिंग दैट देर वॉज सम एरर getting that so the line number here is 30 in the main controller got it so the index here that we are parsing we haven't subtracted one from it because uh, we need zero indexed while everything here is one indexed so we wanted to subtract one as we did earlier in the small controller as well or at least i'm hoping we did so yeah so here we did subtract one so that is something we missed out here let's do that and play another round so we did get player 1 won the game one thing more that we can do is simply replace the whole uh, game by a big x but that's optional i am leaving it as it is as it's visible that uh, player 1 won one. but one thing just as i said you can probably um, implement the same um, so in the tic tac toe small controller if check completed we do this process right so we can do the same uh, so we can do the same for um, the main controller as well or i think let's implement that as well so it will give a good ui finish to the game so the child number go from 0 to 9 and game objects remains the same we have to remove the children and then finally we have to replace the sprite with player 1 the sprites haven't been declared here so let's go and declare the sprites as well in the main controller we need to open the sprite here sprite here drag and play okay so we didn't get the sprites yet let's save the script okay the name game doesn't exist which line is this so we're getting this on 38 right so we just need to check for player let's make the cross player one win once again okay so we didn't get the sprite here okay we didn't have, okay we haven't added the sprites to the public player one player two sprite controller once we do that just give me a second i'll complete this fast
Okay, so we added the sprites again after, before pausing the game and no changes done to the inspector uh, during the game are saved after the game has stopped. So that's why our, our um, sprites didn't get saved again. And the last time... Great. So this indicates that the player 1 has completed the whole game and won the game. So this part of our game is complete. And now in the next videos, we'll just clean up the game a little and make sure that uh, things are working. We show, the, show whose chance it is next. And uh, I think those clean, after those cleanups, uh, our game would be ready. So this was a very important video when it comes to the tic-tac-toe game that we are making and it had the main logic for the tic-tac-toe as well as the UI component of the tic-tac-toe such as replacing the player symbol with the with whoever has won the smaller component or the bigger component. So we have completed our tic-tac-toe smaller game and you are supposed to work on it, improve it in your final project which we will discuss at the end of this video series.